guys, Ash here coming at you today, Ray Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video. I'm glad to have you all here with me today, talking some raid, sending some positive vibes, some love your way, especially if you need it out there today. It's a stressful world out there, isn't it? It really is. But anyway, a little escape here talking about who you should six star next. Five years, four years, I don't know how long it's been. Time flies when you're having fun in good old RSL. But it's still the number one question that I see from you guys in the comments. Heck, even in clan chat. Odds are you've seen it in your clan chat. Who would you six star next? This champion or that champion? On Reddit, who do I invest in next? And let's face it, guys, it can be, it can be daunting. I don't care if you're a new player, if you're a, a seasoned veteran in this game, there's a lot of champions in this game, right? And there's a lot of different areas in this game and they're adding more, well, God knows, they're adding more all the freaking time, aren't they, guys? Fusions and fragment summons and uh, guaranteed events and whatever, yeah, right? So how do you really decide, right? So I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna break it down really simple. I don't want this to be a half an hour long video. Oh God, fingers crossed that it's not. But I wanna basically give you some, some parameters that I consider, but a, a caveat, a disclaimer. Honestly, guys, it's your account. You're not gonna screw up your Raid Shadow Legends account. If you ever pull a really cool champion, right? Let's just do a, let's do a rando here, right? If you pull a really cool champion that you really like, even if they're not the best, good old Magma Blood, the big fella, right? He's not a good champion, right? But you might love him, and you might want to enjoy him on your account. There's nothing wrong with that. You're really not going to regret, you know, maxing any, or maybe you could regret, but you're going to learn from your regrets, right, um, in this game. And you're not going to mess up your account so much so that you're not going to be able to enjoy it in the, in the future. Raid Shadow Legends is a slow burn. Need to like slow burn movies if you're gonna like Raid Shadow Legends, unless you're just a whale kraken spender out there. Uh, it, this game is meant to be enjoyed slowly over time, but the nice thing is, is as you start to build your first team and start to upgrade your first champions, things start to progress exponentially faster, right, as you go, right? So if you're kind of bored in the beginning, don't worry, hang in there. You will, you know, start maxing out your first team and so on and so forth. Uh, so number two is, is I like on my account, unless it's an absolute, just game changer champion, right? You're right, like a, an amazing, an Armands or a Sun Wukong or someone really special, a ninja, a free ninja, right? I like to save my most scarce resources, excuse me, to have a little bit of a buffer, right? That could be anything from chickens or feasts or XP brews or, you know, basically a bottom line, a baseline. That way, when I do upgrade that amazing or do, excuse me, pull or get that amazing champion, I actually have the resources and the skill tomes and whatever to go ahead and upgrade them. That being said, I still only have four Whammy. mythical skill tomes on my account. It's enough to Whammy. make a grown man cry. But there's actually a, a lot of solid mythical mythicals that I haven't fully booked out. Like, I love Androck, but I'm trying to save or create, in this case, a buffer of my, especially my most scarce resources. So I would, I would, you know, consider doing the same on your account here. Uh, because the worst feeling is when you finally do pull that amazing game changer and you don't have a nice buffer of everything that's gonna take to actually, you know, ascension and, and everything else on that champion. So before we can answer who to upgrade next, we need to know where you are in the game. All right, so let me make it really, really easy. If you're a beginner in this game, you've been playing for a month or two, basically your focus should be, you know, clan boss, first and foremost, maybe establishing a little bit of campaign progression. But for the most part, it's gonna be three areas. It's gonna be clan boss, demon lord, old school, right? That's gonna give you great resources, great uh, more materials to upgrade your champions, such as skill tomes and shards to pull them, right? So clan boss, Arena, a lot of players get this wrong and they're like, ah, PvP just not for me. It's not for me. I'm going to ignore Arena. No, Arena should be a focus of everybody in this game because, like it or not, it's attached to your Great Hall and your uh, Arbiter missions and a lot other stuff that goes beyond just PvP. So, Great Hall is going to be a priority. Your missions get to gold, you know, four. Goal five, right, should be your goal. Uh, even if you're not really into arena, it's not life or death. You're gonna lose some, you're gonna win some, uh, but you're gonna progress your account along the way. So clan boss in the early game, arena in the early game, and of course, dungeon progression, right? You really wanna get to these stages in the early game uh, where you see the artifacts of five to six, five to six, five to six, four to six, uh, and then it goes three to five, or four to five before that. You really wanna try to get to stage 13. 
as your first kind of goal in normal dungeons in the early game. So you're going to want to invest in the type of champions that are able to help you out there. There's a lot of websites, hellhades.com, ayumilove.net. Uh, I'll link those guys, uh, guides in guys uh, for you guys in the comments below. I also have a champion guide channel where I have like 400 champions reviewed. So you guys can check that out as well. And there's a lot of great content creators that have a guide on basically almost every champion in the game. So if you're unsure about your champion, just Google them, you know, and stuff will come up there and you can make a, a more educated decision. I'm going to give you more parameters on what to look out for, though, in just a moment. Uh, so this is early game, right? Dungeon progression, clan boss, arena. Focus in those areas. A lot of early game players tend to, I think, make the mistake of focusing too much on faction wars. Uh, faction wars should be... One of the last things I think that you start focusing on, you know, before we really get to like the mid and the end game, mainly because Faction Wars does not require a bunch of level 60 champions, at least in the beginning of the game, right? You can get a lot of value. And this is very important because you might be asking yourself, who should I six star next? But that champion might only require five stars. Heck, it might only require four stars depending on where you are inside the game, right? So uh, take all these things into consideration. So what about the mid game? About the mid game, you will start getting into faction wars and building the, and developing these uh, bespoke teams in each faction, right? Uh, at that point, it's gonna become a little bit more intuitive what sort of champions that you need to make those teams. But of course, you should do your faction wars in the, in the early game, in the mid game, but I wouldn't max out champions specifically for faction wars until you progress a little bit more stick to the areas that we mentioned but after that after maybe you've been playing for six months or or, or a year okay now what should we fo be focusing on in the mid game you know scaling into the end game of raid shadow legends well i would recommend hydra clan boss mainly to get mithrala because mithrala the champion that you can farm through playing Hydra Clan Boss is one of the best champions out there, one of the best legendaries in the game. She's going to help you almost everywhere else, including Hydra as well. So Mithrala is going to be an absolute priority. Thus, Hydra Clan Boss should be a big priority for you guys. Beyond that, Doom Tower, like Dark Fey for lethal gear, uh, is going to be really important. And uh, maybe sp pushing specific content like Secret Rooms or Centranos and Cursed City. This is, again, a, kind of a mid-game uh, orientation that you guys can focus on so let's talk about i was going to show you mithral like 10 minutes ago it's almost a moot point here but yeah she's really good she's a cleanser she's shielding she's bringing you two essential buffs and a debuff all in the same ability worth your books worth everything okay all right now let's get to the uh let's get to the factors here there's really four factors that I want to consider outside of where you are in the game, the early, the mid, the end game. We kind of discuss what to focus on there. So number one is rarity and number two, three, and four are the three V's. Okay, trying to make this easy. Boys and girls, gather around. Professor Ash. Rarity is pretty obvious, but the higher the rarity of the champion, they're going to be more resource intensive to upgrade, right? So just be cognizant of that. What does that mean? It means in order to six star a legendary champion in the game, you want to make sure that you're actually going to get some really nice value. And when I say max out six star, I'm talking like user skill tomes and everything. Now there's another whole category of champions out there that maybe you can take to level, even a legendary, take to level 50. You might not even have to book them. And again, that's something that you can find, especially out there on you know the internet, on the web, uh, or on other YouTube guides. A lot of these guides will recommend, okay, you can get a lot of utility without masteries and without books on this champion, right? Uh, but suffice it to say, you want a champion that's gonna make a massive impact on your account uh, for a legendary, because legendary skill tomes are incredibly difficult to get. You don't wanna have one of those mentalities, and we all know those players, that they just they talk themselves into everybody they pull. And it might be a really good champion. It might be, you know, Errol is a great nuker now. He, he received a great buff, but you're like, oh, Errol. Oh, oh, he nukes and he hits hard and he got a buff. He got a big buff. I'm going to go in for Errol. But your account might just not need that. Try to stave off just falling in love with everybody, right? You don't want to be that guy or that gal, right? It's you. Make sure it's what you need. So how do you decide what they need, what you need, excuse me, beyond rarity? So just to wrap up rarity, that threshold for that decision, you know, it matters what rarity they are, obviously. Epics are gonna have a little bit lower of a threshold because they're a little bit less resource intensive and it's easier to find epic skill tomes and rare skill tomes than it is legendaries. Suffice it to say, you don't want a niche legendary who you're just gonna be replacing in a few months. 
Don't want to use all your resources on them. If we're going to be replacing them in a few months, no, no, no. Uh, make sure it's worth it if it's going to be a high rarity, especially a mythical, right? We haven't even spoken about mythicals, but make sure, I mean, test out a mythical a lot before you invest your mythical skill tomes because, gosh, street value on those bad boys are like $30 a pop. I don't know, it could be off by like $10 or so, but geez, they're expensive, okay? So be very, very cautious, as I said with me and Androx. So rarity's out of the way. Uh, don't want a legendary that you're just gonna replace. So what are the three Vs? Versatility. You And only you know this, right? I mean, you can look at hellhades.com. They have area rankings. So let me actually pull up like a, a great epic champion, for example, on Hell Hades. Uh, Ugo, for example, great epic. And she's very versatile. She's bringing essential buffs, essential uh, clean, a little cleanse, some great heals. And look at the area rankings. You can go to Ugo on hellhades.com or just go to hellhades.com and search the champion up. And you can see every champion has these wonderful area ratings. That's going to Tell you this champion's versatility, right? There's nothing wrong with if it's if you're really focused on one specific area of the game and you know that's gonna make a major impact on your account. If you can just clear it and, and investing in one champion that's only good in one key area for you. But just make sure that's the case, right? Don't fall in love with an arrow if you don't need them, okay? So Going back to Ugo, this is an epic champion who absolutely checks off the versatility checkbox, right? Uh, can be used almost everywhere in the game. It's insane. You really want to value champions that you can use everywhere in this game. So the first V is versatility. The second V is value over replacement, okay? I'm not going to go max out a, uh, for example, if I have a, a, a poison combust team uh, and I'm already, I'm rocking it with, with Xavier, right? Who has a great ability where she's combusting or dealing damage from all poisons instantaneously, right? Uh, and I pull an Eleanoril. Like, sure, Eleanoril's amazing. And I actually like Eleanoril personally a little bit more than Xavier. However, her value over replacement just isn't there to prioritize her. In other words, let's say I am using, you're a massive fan and a massive user of Mausoleum Mage, right? And he's going in there, he's your main increased defense, block debuffs champion, he's also got a cleanse, and then you pull like a Hackhorn Smash Lord. Yeah, Hackhorn Smash Lord after his buff, is probably a, a bit better, like better, <laughs> inarguably, in a lot of ways, than a Mausoleum Mage. He doesn't have like the increased defense, but still, it's value over replacement, you know? You don't want to obviously upgrade and max out a champion using your scarce resources when you have a, a an option that's not quite as good, but, but very close, you know? So that one's pretty obvious, but always assess who you have in these current roles, right? Now with damage dealers, it might not always be intuitive who's gonna be better. It might be a big value over replacement, it might not. That's where I really, especially with higher rarities, I would really compel you guys to take the time and look them up and take a look at their multipliers, take a look at their base stats, and maybe watch a YouTube video guide, uh, especially if you're a beginner and you don't know what those stats and multipliers actually translate you to in the game. And the last factor, guys, is the mid and end game vibe ability of the champion so even if you're in the early game or the mid game i always encourage people to think about how good are they in the end game it kind of harkens back to a point that we made earlier in this video right you don't want to invest in a champion that you're just going to be replacing in a few months why not now it's impossible to tell exactly what you'll be getting in a few months except for the fact that we do have daily login rewards let me give you an example of uh end game viability or replacement right for example we know daily login rewards Rewards. We know all these champions. You can go again to Hell Hades. It goes for like 800 days, right? We know we're going to be getting a Vizix, a Provoker, right? An Ally Protector, a Void One at that. We know we're going to be getting a uh, a great Reviver, Still the Drakes. Ah, I love you still. After 180 days, we know that. So it wouldn't be the best idea to go in there and invest heavily on a single target reviver right before we're gonna get Silla the Drakes, right? So keep in mind, we can forecast a little bit, but I always wanna be thinking about the end game viability of these champions. Even if you're gonna be replacing them with a better option, 
Are you going to be able to get utility out of them in the end game? And what is the end game? Again, it's the more recent content inside Raid Shadow Legends, like Curse City or Doom Tower secret rooms that are incredibly niche, right? This one is Epic Void Champions. I guess that's a, a little less niche, but some of them are crazy. Do I have any going on right now? Yeah. Rare Spirit Champions only. So yeah, I might have a Gnarlhorn that I used in, you know, Phantom Shogun as an Enfeeble tank. But I know I'm going to get a lot of utility out of him in the end game as well. And again, you can find this in area rankings in uh, guide write-ups as well. So again, to reiterate, versatility, value over replacement, and then the mid or end game viability. How long? Will you be using this champion? That and their rarity mixed with where you are in the game? Well, hell, that's all you have to worry about, guys. And really, worry is not the correct word that I'm looking for here. This is a game. Hakuna Matata. It means no worries. Again, do what you think is going to, you're going to get enjoyment out of. But I hope I can refer back to this video when the next person asks me, who should I six star next? Hopefully, you guys found this helpful. Much love. And as always, take care, guys.